Yeah. Great YouTube, Captain Machine here, back for another vlog. And I want to talk about the end of the Twilight Saga because as a horror fan, as a genre fan, a fantasy, sci-fi, horror, you know, all that kind of thing, I was really, really turned off by the Twilight Saga. And the argument could be made quite, quite actually that the Twilight Saga brought in new, um, try to handle the word, new viewers, new consumers of the media, maybe. But I would say, actually, maybe they were just carryovers from, what's it called? Harry Potter. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Basically. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> this is the same group of people after the mid Twilight went straight into Fifty Shades of Grey. And I love the gentleman game. I do his occasional. Re I do occasionally dip into his videos, but generally speaking, I do not think that book is any good whatsoever. In fact, it's worse than the Twilight books in terms of like everything. Basically, um, but what got what got me thinking was tangentially two different things. First of all, um, Stephanie Myers, the lady who wrote the Twilight Saga, um, has been writing other stuff, and. Because of the popularity of the Twilight Saga and the fact that it's now over and all the tweens are crying because they've got no more films to go to and they're praying to whatever deity they worship that there's going to be some kind of spin-off. Um, Stephanie Myers has been snapped up with another one of her books called The Host, which has been adapted into a film. I think it's already pretty much done, really. Uh, which are, which is sound... The concept sounds amazing. Basically, it's... Um, the body snatchers thing or the faculty or any of those other alien invasions films but it starts at the end where I mean the aliens have already won they've taken over most of the world and it revolves around the resistance against them and also the idea that one particular parasite takes over a host and rather than completely obliterating the original host, uh, Psyche, it kind of merges with it and there's this conflict between the two, or something like that. I'm, I must admit, I haven't read the synopses on this one too well, but that sounds amazing. Now, I hate to say this, this might be the first step in my book I actually read, because the synopses sounds good. Now, I'm told that her prose is a bit god-awful, and there is apparently one scene in it which is basically Battered Wife Syndrome, the movie. Um, and that is a bit of a turn off. But I, I might sit through it. I might go down to the local library and actually buy, rent it rather than, you know, put money down on this thing in case it is shit. Probably will be, there you go. So, yeah, I'm thinking I might actually meet, I might actually read my first Stephanie Myers book because of this. And tangent, they also want to talk about Kirsten Stewart. Now, Kirsten Stewart is a actress. Let me get the old chair down. There we go. There we go. Now, Kirsten Stewart is an actress who I find damn thing. In fact, I find fascinating in the fact that she, as a case study of how to garner your fans' interest and then throw it away, utterly throw it away. Because I think Hollywood's going to go down this path, or at least some actors are going to go down this path, whereby being, they will do this. In fact, there is every possibility that the lad who used to play the child actor from Two and a Half Men, who's now basically a grown adult, might be doing the exact same thing right now. But how she managed to capture the public imagination the way she did was fascinating. Because basically, by publicly going out with the guy who played Edward and her is playing Bella, she managed to make that fantasy of this relationship between Bella and Edward a reality. And a lot of people clung on to that in a, in a rather fanatical way. And then when she had that affair on, I think it was on the set of Snow White and the Huntsman, um, the whole thing just turned on itself, imploded literally overnight. I mean, we've all probably seen the videos by now because they were getting kind of viral at one point where women are just screaming at the TV or the camera where they're, you know, you know 
slut shaming the woman basically, which is an activity I find quite ridiculous and quite stupid, but <sighs> you do have a very rabid fan base here. Um, they were saying to her, how could you throw it away? How could you throw it away? To the point where, um, in the, obviously they couldn't get rid of Bella for the last movie, for Twilight, but she was nowhere to be seen during the promotion of this film at all. And apparently Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 is one of those rare beautiful films which is so bad, it's good. And I haven't seen many films that fall into that category. I do watch a lot of reviews from people telling me that films fall into that category. I've not watched many of them myself. I've got Jean-Claude Van Damme and Alien vs. Ninjas in the other room. So when I get bored one day, I'm going to pop them on and see if I can find a film out there that is so bad that it's good. But uh, I also find, and this is going to make me sound like a chauvinistic pig, but I don't find Kirsten Stewart that interesting a person. First of all, yeah, she looks good. She looks really good. In Hollywood standards, she's above average. And really, we're talking Hollywood standards here. But she has that weird thing I call Hollywood lip. Now, this is not an official thing. This is just something I've coined myself. But I find that when her face is completely neutral and she's not laughing or smiling or joking or trying to act and failing horribly every time she does it, um, her lip just kind of just rides up and you can see her top teeth. And it's like... I can't do it. Now, first of all, fat people don't get a Hollywood lip. It just doesn't happen. And B, you really can't force it. You just It happens naturally. And I'm, I'm, I'm been trying to find a picture of it to show everybody because it's just something that draws me out. Um, when I'm trying to watch a film with her in it. I think I've only ever watched one film with her in it, and that was Snow White Huntsman. And generally speaking, that is a good film. If you can tolerate her. Because every single scene she's in. I mean every single scene she's in. <sighs> sucks. So hard. It does. Now the Huntsman character is great. The Prince Charming character is great. The Wicked Witch. The, well, Wicked, the Evil Witch. Stepmother. Witch thing. Great. The Dwarves are amazing. Um, you know all the scenes like that. They're Fantastic. The moment Snow White walks onto the set, it's like, fuck. Avengers are going to walk off and it's going to be good again. And thankfully, there was a huge chunk of the movie where she has fuck all to do with it. But if you can tolerate that, then it's still a good movie. And I really enjoyed watching the pictures because my fair lady took me to watch it. And I didn't want to watch it because basically I was aware that the place was going to be full of Twilight fans because Kirsten Stewart was in it. This is before she got out of I think for being basically, you know, a two-timing bitch. And it was so fun to watch their reaction to the movie. Because, first of all, you know, the whole... It starts off with this great fantasy epic opening. And they just switched off. The entire audience switched off, collectively. I mean, there must have been, what, a dozen people. In a rather packed cinema that actually really, really got into the starting scene. Then Kirsten finally shows up and all the tweens, I call them tweens, all the tweens start getting active a bit with it. And there's this one moment where she, oh, one moment where the huntsman gets knocked out cold by this troll they've just encountered. And he, I think his last words he says is like, run away, run away. And she doesn't, she walks up to it and just screams at it badly. And it backs down. And I remember the two women in front of me at the cinema. One leaned over to them and went, she has good powers. And I just, well, figuratively, not literally, wet myself right there and then. And <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this is, this is why people have come to see this film. And this is why people were so disappointed with it because um, if you went in as a Twilight fan expecting another Twilight film, and they even tried to crowbar in a, a love triangle at the end, you weren't going to get what you wanted. But if you want to see a fantasy movie, provided you can stomach the scenes because she was actually in, it's really good, especially when dwarves show up. Um, so yeah, a bit of random musing there. The host, Stephanie Myers, Kirsten Stewart, completely not my normal topics of conversation. I don't know either. <laughs>